Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a service call for this large Aon split system water source heat package unit where we have water all over the floor. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. So this unit is currently shut down. This is an office space but check it out. It had water coming on the opposite side of this wall. It was slightly cleaned up, but this water was everywhere. And it seems to be coming from this Aeon unit. So right now the power is off and I just turned the valves back on. All right, valves right here. These two are now open as they're parallel to the pipe. They come through. I'm here, I wanna see if I see anything. I'm just hoping it's not any coil or anything. Okay, so we are here and I see a small drip here. I wonder if you guys can see it in the video. Let me see if I can see, you can see that. Can you see a little bit of water dropping right there? I wonder. It's leaking right there. center of the video you see like a little splash of it so i got a tiny drip and i guess over time it created a big problem so the water is dripping from underneath here but this area is soaked too let's cut out this insulation at least here and see if we see anything and try to see where this water is coming from well, let's cut out this section oh yeah this is all soaked i can feel it let's cut out this area and see what we see mm. It might be here, even though it's dripping here. There's a, I see a soldered fitting here. It's wet. We're gonna have to open this up. I'm suspecting this coupling right here. If you look at this connection here, you can tell this was brazed. And if you look at this connection here, you can tell it was soldered and it looks like the solder isn't holding. So we're gonna clean up this area. We're gonna dry it up. And then we're gonna see if we see where the water's coming from, I believe it's this coupling. Okay, wait, I saw something right there. You see that? Right there. Yeah. Bad starter joint. The tiniest, tiniest little hole. It's right here. See it? It's literally right where my freaking thumb is. Right, right here. Mm -hmm. As far as this, we gotta cut out this coupling. And yeah, we gotta cut out that coupling. Either braze one on or press one on. All right, guys, so I just opened up this area so what would be our best bet and what we're working with. We do have a union there, so we could possibly use that to our advantage. Close the water. See that little, little dot right there? Tiny piece of water just sitting there. Yeah, I closed the supply and return for here. This needs to get changed down. I look on the bottom, look at all that solder. They didn't have a good connection here. They were just spraying solder on there. It overflowed like crazy. This really was a poor job here. And that's, that's all it is. I mean, you see braids like that? That's how you know it wasn't good. This thing ain't even on straight. Whatever. We're going to come here and do the right thing. We're going to have a talk with building management, see what they want to do. This is an office space that is currently vacant. So we'll see how urgent this is. Either we want this fixed today, which I could do, you know, on overtime charges, or we come back and do it, but I'm just gonna put together a plan here. But yeah, this little section has to go. And just like that, we are back. They approved overtime. We're gonna rebuild this section here where we have that leaking coupling that was very poorly soldered. So 
powers off to the machine. The supply and return water valves are closed to the machine. Now we have to drain the remaining water in the system. This is a strainer here. You will be able to drain, but you're not gonna get down there. You need to crack this union and drain it, but we do have a plug here. So we're gonna drain from this system here. We don't have a garden hose connection here. So if we get a bag or something and drain that out. Oh, it's coming right off. So, I'm gonna be able to open this valve and drain the system from here. And it's just a matter of how we're gonna cut this pipe properly. I do have a close quarters pipe cutter, but we have to see. Wow, it's pretty weak right there. We have to see if we're gonna be able to get around here because it's a bit tight and close to the floor. We'll see, we'll make it happen. We'll use a bandsaw, pipe cutter, saws, or whatever we gotta do to make this happen. Well, we gotta rebuild this section right here. It is so low to try to drain into here, but we're just gonna have to make it work like this. Let's crack it a little bit. Okay. Let's let this drain out. Might need some air to put, help push it out. But let's start with this. All right, batch number one. <laughs> it needs to get dumped. All right. We're gonna have to want to move our stuff. We're gonna have to dump it down the floor drain. All this is draining. Once it stops, there's also an air vent up top here. If I open that valve, it would allow air into the system. So if anything, honestly, you could open that and that would be the end of it. While it's draining, let's sand down the pipe in the area I'm gonna cut. I have a pipe cutter, which is a close quarters pipe cutter. So this is probably as small as you can get. Problem is, when I hit the floor, I could loosen this unit up and try to lift it up a little bit. Maybe we can move it, maybe. But also, we're hitting this drain pipe. I gotta see what I could do. Okay, I should be able to cut this side here this will make a nice straight cut this is the bandsaw this one I'm not getting in there let me see if I could take off this actuator there's a screw right here I can pop this off let me see if that gives me some some room to work with here okay this is just a Phillips screwdriver I'm gonna take off this screw right here and that should pop me off Sure this is the same exact way when I put it back. I mean, it kind of gives me space, uh, but not really. Oh, why is everything in my way? I can't take any of this off, huh? see I'm gonna try to press this Would that be enough space yeah I think so I gotta try I gotta do it the best I can as far as here I gotta cut it right there let me see actually the length of pipe that I have oh yeah we good all right, I'm going for it. Try to cut this as straight as possible. Oh, man, I got a little battery on there. Of course. All right. Use it up for the light as whatever I have oh yeah that's low battery come on and that's gone beautiful let's just follow the cut keep it as straight as we can no more water
tiny little bit of water there. All right, let's let that leak out. Got my pipe wrenches here. It's the best angle I got right there. I'm gonna try to loosen up this union and see if I catch any slack with this pipe. Will help me cut it and make the repair I need to. Yeah, that ain't helping at all. <laughs> it ain't helping at all. Sheesh. I really only like using a pipe cutter to cut pipe. Bandsaw is probably the next best option, but if you're not cutting in the proper angle, it's not gonna be straight. But I hate to use a sawzall, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So we gotta cut this as straight as possible. Of course, that's in my way. Mm. Let's try right here. Ooh, hoo -hoo, that cut better than the bandsaw, man. That's a nice cut. I'm gonna take some more sandpaper. Try to make it real nice and smooth here. Okay. Also, I have a tool here. This deburs the inside and the outside of the pipe. If I really need to, I can even use a file. You want you don't want any crazy sharp edges when you're trying to press because there is a gasket in between that. This pipe, I feel like I can cut it a little bit more to make it as see how straight this is. This one. It's a little bit off, but it's honestly, it'll hold, you know, but let's do the best we can. So I'm going to sand that all down. Okay. Oops. Where are we at? Yeah. And we're going to have to deburr the inside and the outside of the pipes. Let's get an exact measurement. We're going to use something called a slip coupling. I'm going to show you what that is. And that's what you use when you basically have no slack. So we're going to take an exact measurement here and cut a fresh piece of pipe. All right, I marked seven and a half inches exactly where I needed, and I'm gonna use this pipe cutter to give myself a nice cut. Let's make sure this is fully tight. All right, that's a perfect cut. Sand this down, deburr the inside and outside. If you don't have the specialized tool like I have, basically you just wanna file down these sharp edges. All right, guys, so the secret is a slip coupling. See this? Usually when you put on a coupling, it stops, right? With this, it slips over the pipe. Then this one slips over the pipe. Then we're gonna fit this guy in place. You want the pipe to fit in place. And you're gonna slip it between the two. And then you're gonna line this up properly. And slip this in between the two. But also try to mark this with a marker to make sure you get it in the middle. And that's how you put this together. That's the secret. I took a Sharpie and I took, I made a measurement here. So this is a little marking point here so I know we're halfway into the coupling, right? I'm gonna try to be as even as possible. So we're gonna use it as reference. Let's put that back together. Okay, so right there, marked here, so I know I'm in the middle. Marked here, so I know I'm in the middle because these pipes are directly touching each other. So we know that we're perfectly centered. The only thing here is to make sure does this monstrosity of a tool gonna fit on here. If it does, oh man, we're gonna be out of here. If not, we're gonna have to braise that. And I do have two slip couplings that can be sweated, so. Let's pray to the Lord right now. Uh, looks like we're just gonna fit, guys. Let's get it on here. Make sure we're in the middle. Let's press the button, let's crimp it. Next. Make sure we're in the middle. Of course, I got a million 
phone calls hold up, I will call you back. Okay. All right, let's get it. Okay. This tool is insanely ridiculous. It's heavy, like insane, my God. But once it's on the pipe, you don't really feel anything. All right. Okay. People don't know when to relax. All right. All right let's tighten this up. Make sure we're good. This can go right back. Okay. And we can open the water and test for leaks. Let's go ahead and open up the water and test for leaks. Crack that open. Pressure's going up. All right, building up slowly. All right, valves are open. We're just drying off the area. Make sure that the pipe is nothing is leaking there. Let's clean that all up. Bro, who's eating nuts over here and throwing it on the floor, bro? <laughs> Yo, what the heck? You nasty person, man. All right, everyone, valves are open. Everything's put back to normal. Even put this actuator back in its place, just simple. One screw, sits on its base. And that right there, is a beautiful thing no leaks all right no leaks there you could even see but there's no leaks there that is absolutely phenomenal oof looks super super clean compared to these clumpy connections lopsided and all that at least it's braised though i trust that more but also that solder joint looked terrible all right guys you already know that right there is a beautiful thing. Put some Teflon tape on this end cap. Make sure it's nice and clean. You don't want any little drips there either. Definitely a important little thing to do, but things are drying up. Uh, a couple of wet steps, but everything's looking good. Pretty much gonna wrap this one up from here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Catch you all next time.